Dr. Sherry Berger here for this week's Holohan's Hot Topic. I'm here with Dr. Melissa Holohan. Hey, doctor, what's going on in the world of critical care this week? Hi, this week we're going to be talking about the effect of cuff presence and cuff inflation on airway pressure in a canine tracheostomy tube model. So tracheostomy tubes are commonly used to provide a temporary patent airway. Probably the most common way that we use these in veterinary practice to date is in the um, area of respiratory tract obstruction. And so probably one of the most common cases that we're evaluating is those with lo severe laryngeal paralysis or laryngeal edema. But you can also see patients with laryngeal masses or cancer of the trachea where we need to try to use a, a temporary, um, get a temporary airway. It can also improve neurologic or respiratory function, sorry, be used in impaired neurologic or respiratory function, um, improve surgical access to oral cavity or pharynx, and provide access to lower respiratory tract. Background, currently the um, tracheostomy tube recommendations are to use the outer diameter um, must not exceed 75% of the tracheal diameter or to use a tube that does not fill the lumen. However, this is not based on any current research um, and is more just anecdotal reports and recommendations. So cuff tubes have been evaluated mainly for three reasons, to protect the lower airway, prevent dislodgement of the tube, and to prevent leakage of gas. However, they may increase the risk of tracheal necrosis, tracheal infections, obstruction, and stenosis. So this particular study wanted to evaluate the effect of pressure and the effect of the cuff inflation on the airway pressure. And they used an inspiratory model of a canine tracheostomy um, using cadaver tracheas. They wanted to evaluate a larger diameter cuff tubes um, to, see if they to see if they achieve similar pressures when compared to smaller uncuffed tracheostomy tubes. And you can see in the picture there the most common um, trachea, um, tracheostomy tubes, the cuffed ones on the left, and the uncuffed on the right. So the study design was an ex vivo study. It evaluated beagle dog cadavers using the trachea and placement of tracheostomy tubes in these cadavers, looking at airway pressure and flow rates measured. And the, the interventions in this study were to look at uncuffed and cuffed adult tracheostomy tubes, without and with maximum cuff inflation. During this time, airway pressure was measured, and they chose constant flow rates compared to previous studies at 30 and 60 liters per minute. And so this schematic below shows how the setup was done for the study um, with the cadaver trachea in place. The tracheostomy tube was placed traditionally at the sites between the fourth and fifth tracheal rings. About 50% of the trachea was exposed for placement of the tra tracheostomy tube, and then they were instrumentated with the following airway and flow pressure devices um, for study measurements. The tracheostomy tubes were evaluated versus an intact trachea without any tracheostomy tube in place. Then they also went on to look at the different sizes. Size four was evaluated uncuffed and cuffed, the uncuffed tracheostomy tube actually had the lowest airway pressure, and the cuffed with inflation had the highest airway pressure. When they compared these, there was really no difference between the size 6, 8, and 10. However, as a group, they did have a significant increase in airway pressure with the cuff, um, cuff with and without in, in inflation. Um, so inflation of the cuff overall always significantly increased airway pressure, and that was one of the main things they were looking at. There were similar pressure differences, though, between sizes 4 and 6 in the uncuffed tubes. So the main conclusion of this study, or the importance, is that the cuffed tracheostomy tubes really should not be used in, at all times, um, if possible, unless specifically indicated due to increased airway pressure. And that's mainly because of the side effects that they're showing here, that it significantly increases airway pressure in these patients, and I think probably the only time that you're going to be using a, particularly a cuffed tracheostomy tube would be in a patient that is being mechanically ventilated, um, where you're having to make sure you have a good seal. However, I think that I would caution everyone across the board, although this study looked at tracheostomy tubes, I think you can easily equate it to endotracheal tubes in the um, instance of any anesthesia-related event, 
to make sure that we're being very careful about using that cuff tube and making sure that we're all um, only inflating it as needed and sometimes maybe not at all in those patients. So I think that the study definitely would be nice to uh, be reevaluated doing endotracheal tubes as well um, to simulate more of what's going on on our day-to-day -day basis, but I think that we can definitely extrapolate that information from this. And there are a lot of devices out there now where you can actually measure the amount of air that you're putting in the cuff, um, as well as doing the visual inspection and listening for leaks as you're gradually inflating it. Uh, but I thought this was a, a nicely done study and um, certainly something we need to evaluate on a day-to-day -day basis in our patients. And that's all this week on Hallahan's Hot Topics.